Hey guys, Wave Function here, and uh, I'm here today in KSP with a mod called KSPI, and today we're going to be go going over power networks. I will not be talking about upgrades or orbits or anything like that. I'm just going to show you how to create a very basic power station that will get you up and running as early as possible. So to start with, I am going to use a probe core. Now that's just so that I have uh, control of the vessel without a Kerbal involved. Uh, you can use any size. I'm just using that because it really doesn't matter. Uh, then we need a generator to collect power off of our off our reactor. Uh, I will go into if people are interested, I will go into how reactors work and their different versions and variations and everything later on. But the important part is the first thing that you're going to get is fission. So we'll just plop a wrong one. We'll just plop a fission reactor on there. Uh, you always want to use power station. You want to use the biggest one that you can get pretty much because they scale ridiculously well. Uh, this fission reactor only produces thermal power, so we want to make sure that it is in KTEC solid state generator mode. If you do not have this swap type button, don't worry about it. You're collecting thermal power because it only comes after the upgrade that you can swap the type. All right, and we need a docking port. Now I went away from the wrong. There we go. Need a docking port to uh, dock up to later for maintenance. Now to transmit, we need transmitter. Now you may be tempted to to use this big bad boy, plop it on the side, span it. It's big and huge. Looks really neat. Deploys really neat. It's got a cool animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, forget about that. You don't need that for transmission. All you need is an array. Doesn't matter the size whenever you're transmitting. When you're relaying, size doesn't matter either. Neither does orientation. So when you're transmitting or relaying, size and orientation of the array does not matter. All you need is line of sight to be able to receive the power. It transmits in all directions. It will relay in all directions. So assuming that uh, we want this thing to be able to relay and transmit, we'll plop two of those on there and we'll set one when we get outside we'll set one to relay mode and one to transmit mode and that will allow this station to act as both a relay and a transmitter so you can send up multiple versions of this same section here and create your network off of whole power stations instead of just sending up relay only which I'll show you I'll show a simple relay later but uh, we want to make sure that are our thermal that we're not going to, to uh, overheat so we need to make sure we have enough uh, radiators on here now should be able to get away with just these I think four of them should do let's scooch this down all right so all right here's the thermal helper uh, you can toggle it on right there. But here's a thermal helper, and it just tells you how much power you're able, your how much heat you're producing. That's right here, and then how much your radiators can get rid of, which is right here. If it's green, mean it, it means that you can dissipate all the power that you can produce. All well, all the heat that you can produce. We scooch this down to two then we could see that we are now yellow which means that we're not going to overheat nothing is going to shut down but we're not going to get full efficiency because we're not able to dissipate all of the heat that's being produced we're producing nine gigawatts we're only able to dissipate six It'll, it will reach equilibrium if it's in the yellow if it's in the red 
Oh, wow. If it's in the red, meaning our maximum power dispersion, if th these numbers are red, means it's going to overheat. It will overheat and it will turn off your transmitters. And if it's a fusion reactor, it will turn off the fusion reactor. Uh, it will turn off anything that's generating heat. So uh, you can use the big ones, uh, the bigger ones, but it's kind of overkill. So you only need one. They scale by four, so we'll just go one size down and add four and whammo, we got enough. We can get by with three, I think. Yeah, we can get by with three. We're gonna go with four because this looks pretty. All right, so now we got our our power generation, our uh, our power source. We can uh, we can transmit it. We can relay the power. We can dock and refuel and all that good stuff, and we can dissipate all the power or whatever. So you get this thing up in orbit. Uh, I'll leave that to. Uh, to however you want to do it but uh, one thing you may want to add if you're not going to leave an engine a power source or whatever I mean in, some way to maneuver like an engine on the bottom of this thing if you're not going to leave some way to maneuver then should your orbits get out of alignment you're not going to be able to align it so what I like to do on mine is let's find my mono propellant is that it? Yeah. So let me plop that off there. Stick. Now we won't do that. I'm being picky. I'm sorry. We'll just grab four of these. Something like the center of mass. Do 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 do. do. Uh, which one is it? I think it's that. I got too many add ons. Alright, that's close enough. This will give us some a little bit of atti attitude control, it means that we can adjust our orbits if need be, as long as we have mono propellant on board. You shouldn't really need it. I'll show you uh, why in a little bit. I'll show you a little bit, of, a little trick to getting your orbits uh, set up. But uh, that's your basic power station. Now, if this thing will transmit and relay. If you don't want to, if you're worried about fairings, because these things poke out a whole lot, if you're worried about fairings, then just plop your, your docking port down there. Just put, oh, stop being stupid. I'll just put one up here, and you can set that to transmit, and it'll transmit all the power, and then you'll have different satellites in orbit around it, they will relay the power around Kerbin. Now I will show you a simple version of that right here. So we just take a oop, take a probe core. Is that the right size? Yeah. Everything looks small with the new large parts now. Okay. So simple relay. Uh, we want to be able to control its attitude. Do, 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 do. Where's my hooey? I really went pat right past it, didn't I? Oh, there it is. I'm only using the stock parts uh, just for this example. But anyway, and then we throw some RCS on here just for some attitude control three four and make sure that it still has power so we'll, uh, we'll add some of these don't need all of them but that'll do and and add our relay that's what we need relay 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 You'll get this thing in orbit and just relay. Now these things don't produce a lot of power. I mean, they don't produce a lot of heat, but so you don't really need uh, power dissipation. But if you're using solar panels, you're probably going to want 
some power dissipation. In which case you can just take four of these little bad boys on there. And you're you're dissipating way more power in this thing. Relaying does not generate waste heat. Uh, I don't know if these generate waste heat. I don't think the wherever the thermal thermoelectrics generate waste heat. But uh, should they generate waste heat, you got a way to dissipate it. The body itself is going to 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 uh, dissipate waste heat somewhat, but uh, you can augment it. You don't have to include it, but if you're using solar power to, to make sure that your probe core is has power, then uh, you're going to want to uh, include at least a little bit of of um, waste heat generation. I can't talk right. Okay, so anyway, you can get this thing in orbit. Go away. Get this thing in orbit however you want. Uh, you can launch them like four at a time. You know, just strapped to the sides. You know, but just strapped to the sides of a of a rocket or something like that. And as you go around the orbits, you can just drop them off and then use the thrusters to set their orbits. Now, there's lots of tutorials on how to do or uh, how to set up uh, networks on, on YouTube, so I won't go over that. But I will show you an example what I've got. Boop 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 boop. I think you can get away with three. Relays, but uh, as you can see, I've got my, I've actually got four relays up. Uh, as you can see, I've got them at 90 degrees separation. And they're at, well, they're at 70, 750K uh, kilometers. That gives me, as you can see, they each have line of sight of each other. So they will always be able to relay at least to each other and then I have my power station down here at a low orbit and it is always by virtue of how this works it is always in line of sight of relay so no matter where this is at in the orbit it always is able to hit at least a relay and the relay is able to relay power basically anywhere in Kerbin uh, I'll show you my power station just for shits and giggles come on you can do it I like to use fusion uh, the lifespan of your typical uh, of a typical state uh, save is uh, is not really warrant the long life of the uh, fission reactor so I don't really bother them I'll just stick a whole bunch of these bad boys on here and uh, this is my backup power in case for some reason things shut down I've got this little power source that will be able to kick start everything as you can see I've just got transmitter it's just transmitting and then I've got my relays in orbit this is the relay should look very similar to what you saw before. As you can see, it's got some thermoelectrics. Uh, I actually just launched them with HyperEdit because networks are annoying to uh, maintain. There's no way for a satellite to program a satellite to maintain its orbit uh, because every time you switch to a satellite, it's going to alter its orbit ever so slightly and those slight alterations change the period and over the life of actually very quickly usually uh, just just as little as six months to a year you'll have a network that's all out of alignment so what I usually do is um, this is just a test save so I don't I didn't actually bother putting the, the RCS and everything on there but I'll usually put the RCS on there just to simulate that I'm able to do attitude adjustment and uh, 
and then what I'll do is I'll get on the launch pad. Well, yeah, I'll get on. I'll launch them all, and then I'll hyper edit them into orbit. And then I'll get over here in the uh, in the space center, and then I will uh, use hyper edit, and then I'll just do use orbit editor. Uh, select uh, select my relay, and I'll set my uh, my my orbit, and then I'll uh, I'll I'll change the slider here. Where it is. I'll just change this right here. This M E P uh, M E P something some time to epoch or something like that. Anyway, I can't remember exactly what it means. Anyway, it just means the phase of the orbit. Uh, that's what it effectively effectively means. So it'll like this would be like zero degrees. This would be you know 90 degrees, 180, and then as you can see, this one's a little bit off. Uh, anyway, 270, and then you know. 360 zero. So I'll just slide them all into place. Well, first I'll I'll set them as uh, 750 kilometers, and then I will uh, then I'll slide them around until I get them in the approximate shape. And then I never touch them again. I never switch to them because as soon as I switch to them, as you can see, they're all exactly well, pretty much exactly 750 kilometers, which means that their period is exactly the same. So they will never catch up to each other or move far away from each other. They will always move perfectly in lockstep. And that's how I simulate the satellites being able to do attitude adjustments automatically, which normally the computers would be able to do that, but you can't do that in KSP, so I simulate it like that. You can choose to do it if you want, or you can add the added challenge of maintaining your orbits on your own. Anyway, I think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to cover in here. Like I said, I'll go into the different types of reactors in a later tutorial if people want it. And I may go into resources and where you get them and stuff like that. And how to use the different drives and all sorts of other stuff. But uh, that all depends on how much interest there is. So if you like like it please uh like the video and and, and share it uh and i'll see you guys later